Imagine you're trying to solve a homework problem or figure something out for work and you just can't get the answer and how it feels when you finally finish that and get it resolved. Deuteronomy in the later writings. The Lord delighted only in your fathers to love them and he chose their descendants after them, you above all peoples, as it is this day. So in this lesson, we're again looking at Deuteronomy, but specifically looking at how important Israel was for God's plan. The people set aside, like I mentioned in other videos, where they were supposed to represent basically this whole plan that God had for other nations. So it wasn't just for them, but it also touches on the fact that later in this lesson, it's hinting and showing something that we already know, the fact that Israel abandoned their faith. They left and went astray. Not only that, it also points out the fact that they have completely forgotten. So here we're reading, right? And we can kind of understand that they lost even what God was saying at this moment in um, Deuteronomy. This message that he was giving them to not forget it keeps being repeated for them not to forget and to follow God. And all of a sudden, they have completely forgotten it, lost the manuscripts that was written about this. And Josiah, now this young ruler, finds it and how that changes things because now they're remembering. And so the lesson is touching on that to, to make us think and see, right, how important Deuteronomy was and how it shaped Israel at that moment. And it gives a lot of examples of that and uses um, times where it's saying all these warnings that would happen to Israel, we are seeing it happen. And so as a result, I'm going to touch on one thing that is interesting, is how Israel was totally shaped with one occurrence, which was Babylon. When Babylon took over Israel, and destroyed everything and they were taken as captives. How that changed Israel. Now this is significant because again, the book of Deuteronomy was hinting at this. We, we know that this is gonna happen. And so Israel, instead of complaining, they know that they've messed up because it was written there. They knew that this would happen if they didn't follow God. And so in an interesting turn of events, we kind of see one um, one thing that Israel was doing that was wrong, they always focused on the external. And it's, it's an interesting change because the Israel prior, they were just doing things that the other nations were doing. They weren't necessarily following God, but now we see them actually following God, but they're not actually following God. It's all outward focused and not understanding what was written in Deuteronomy. And so now, the Israel that we know, that the lesson is touching on, is the fact that they are not actually doing things correctly, but they think they are. And I actually have a quote here from Wednesday that talks about this. What seems to be happening here is that whatever the outward appearance of religion and piety, um, lots of animal sacrifices, i.e. thousands of rams, that's not what constitutes Israel's covenant relationship with God. So all of a sudden, they're still breaking their covenant. And this is in Micah that you're seeing that again, where they're basically pushing themselves to a different direction, not actually living the covenant that God made, which was supposed to be for the heart to understand, right? For that spiritual side and not just you have to do it for the sake of doing it. And Israel, they went through this transformation because for them, Imagine, they lost everything. Their whole nation, they were scattered, right, throughout um, the world. And now when they're rebuilding, they say, we can't do this again. We have to stay firm. We can't go off again. This is going to keep happening to us. How are we always failing? So again, they say, that's it. We're going to make sure that we don't pass, don't go astray, that we always stay within the parameters that God set for us. But the way that they're looking at it and what ends up happening is that they start creating all these rules and laws and things to cocoon them, to protect them. But their interpretation, their man-made interpretation, 
starts twisting what God really wanted them to do. And so that's why here, all these sacrifices that they're making, everything that they're doing is just an external, it's just for show and tell, right? It's just saying, oh yeah, look, we're, we're doing what God wanted, but they're not actually living it. That is the Israel that even though they had this whole planned, um, God did everything for them. They, they saw exactly what they should be doing. Even though all of that was clear to them, they're still messing up. And why is that? It's because, again, they're not looking to God for the answer. They're looking to themselves. The same way prior to Israel um, being invaded by Babylon and the destruction of Jerusalem, prior to that, they were still doing what they wanted. All the prophets, all the people coming in and trying to do their own bidding, right? And you see the difference. Poor people, right? How could, we're doing the things that make us happy, but Israel wasn't following God until Josiah. And that is the example that I like that this lesson is using. He actually looked at what God wrote. For the first time, it had been a while since they had even seen it. And it talks about how Jeremiah, who was preaching right before Israel was destroyed, was using Deuteronomy and these manuscripts that were found to try to help Israel go back to God's word and how they were refusing to follow that. So it's interesting. And I want to touch on that because even later, Daniel is using Deuteronomy. They're all seeing and understanding this truth. And, and it makes you think, right? What are we doing that we might not be actually doing God's will? How could we be doing it better? And so I wanted to read this quote on Friday to think about how Josiah changed things. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting, but, but let me read and then talk about it after. In the Reformation that followed, the king, Josiah, turned his attention to the destruction of every vestige of idolatry that remained. So long had the inhabitants of the land followed the customs of the surrounding nations in bowing down to images of wood and stone that it seemed almost beyond the power of man to remove every trace of these evils. But Josiah persevered in his effort to cleanse the land. So here, imagine Israel that saw God, that had, that we've been studying, right, with Deuteronomy, that you see his power and presence. You've been through all of these miracles, all these things that Moses led you through. And now here's the moment, but they forgot all of that. Everything that made them who they were. And they're worshiping idols. They're worshiping objects. They're worshiping materials that God made as if, that is more powerful than God. And they're unrecognizable. So imagine how daunting that would have been for Josiah, for him to come in and change all of that. So it's, it's interesting, right, that the difference from that moment, how, how easy it was for them. And it kind of makes you think, how, how do we get to the point that we are now? How do we become basically this thing that we cannot recognize? How is it that each step that Israel took brought them to this moment? And again, it's because when you look to yourself, whatever you're deciding, if you want to do it because you feel like it or because you are using your own interpretation, it's going to be flawed because you don't have the context that God does. You don't know what is going to happen. God was coming with this whole future that he saw, right? That he was presenting and Moses was being guided and instructed by God so he could instruct Israel to not fall into that. Yet they did that. And so for us, standing here or watching this, we need to think about how we are deciding every step of our life. What are we doing? Is it going to guide us towards God? Or is it going to push us astray? So I want you guys to think about that. The decisions that you're making. Is it to do what you want or is it to follow God because it'll always be better in the end for what God wants.